Dargotha hour. <laughs> yeah? Dargotha. Dargotha. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, got that we'll one out of the way pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know, do you want to start with the biggest news since the last podcast? What's the biggest news since the last podcast? Oh, sleepy, oh uh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Sleepy Joe's out of it. Sleepy Joe. Yeah. Uh, He's out of it. It, it got to a point where it did actually kind of start feeling a bit like elder abuse. Just like getting him but out it, there. But it's, it was, I agree. Like, because, like, for the longest time, we found it very funny, right? Like, mm. you know, you post these clips of Biden saying, you know, America can be summed up in one word. And my name was in America. <laughs> like, it's fucking hilarious. It did feel a little bit abusive towards the end, but then mm. it, it, it was self-inflicted abuse. <laughs> like he's the one insisting that he put, he'd be put in this position. Yeah, but that's kind of like the the old person that's ins insistent on sca escaping from the home, right? Like sometimes, but, it's... but but he's putting himself forward to be the leader of the free world, as you know they like saying. Yeah, it's. <laughs> if you just escaped from the old person's home because you really wanted to go to the aquarium or something, you'd be like, "Yeah, fair enough." You like power to you, but no, he's tr he's trying to lead the most powerful fucking country. Oh <laughs> uh, well, I hope he has a nice retirement. You know, maybe he can work on his golf game. I don't believe for a second he's got. A, was it a handicap of eight? <laughs> that was that bit of the fucking. It just. I, you, you know, the, the, mm. it, it's a trite joke, but you know, when they turn the Hadron Collider on, that's like your theory about mm. like when we went into the wrong universe, right? And it mm. just, that was one of those moments where this is, a, this is a fucking presidential debate and the only thing they've got enthused about is arguing about who's better at golf. Yeah. And oh, there was that bit where Biden got like, he had a little scripted bit where he, he got angry. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but but it was like yeah, yeah. but it was like it looked so much like he was trying to remember it. like he was, that was a scripted bit you got to get angry here mr president and yeah yeah oh um, yeah. i would he... love it if you read that bit aloud yeah oh and of course there's all those those bits where he goes um you know he da, 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 he does his speech and he goes long pause uh hold for applause all that kind of stuff when he like when he reads out the uh, the directions on the teleprompter which <laughs> To be fair, I, I have been a teleprompter operator on occasion, and there are so many, like, easy things to, that can go wrong with that. Like, it's so... Oh, yeah, no, of course, yeah. I, I remember when Trump got lambasted because he said Nambia instead of Namibia. <laughs> on a teleprompter... Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry. Oh, you played a bit, um, played a bit of Half Life there in the. Uh, I, I actually accidentally launched Left 4 Dead 2. Oh, entirely accidental. I'm not I, going to be. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but yeah. Um. Uh. I can. You. I completely. What was I saying? <laughs> teleprompter. There's so many oh, yeah, things yeah. that can go wrong. There's so many things that can go wrong because, like, the person on the other side of the teleprompter is adjusting the speed in real time as it's going up. So oh. if they're reading faster or slower or pausing it, so you've always got to have someone there. And when and 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 you're reading words that are moving. Uh, yeah, yeah. So and and if you write down Namibia on a keyboard, and just like glance at it for a second and look away, it will look like Nambia. I always feel like I did. I you know I I, I love. It. I'm, I'm I'm yeah. No, I'm not like like it's not. The point of this is isn't that like every time somebody makes a verbal fuck up, it's it's funny. Like verbal mm -hmm. fuck ups are in themselves kind of amusing. Amongst, oh, amazing! You know, yeah. when somebody when somebody says the wrong word in a conversation. I think it's a particularly English thing as well. We love taking the piss out of that. Oh yeah. But I think it's more because I mean, if I if I were in that presidential debate, like mm -hmm. if you know, if I got um, quantum leaped into it and mm -hmm. it was me having to do it, mm -hmm. like I would fuck up more than Biden. I'm sure. Yeah. I would. I you know conversational dead ends and 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 verbal you know fuck fuck up yeah more than biden but it's not my job <laughs> you know it's his it's his job like a, a, a major portion of of his job is is communication speaking clearly expressing ideas clearly to people like that's kind of the point yeah and it's not just that he made the odd and it kind of annoys me that everybody's fixing on the debate like the you, you know that you know the blue no matter who biden no matter what kind of people yeah um it's saying what you know, one bad debate. You know, everybody's being so like it wasn't one. Like no, the debate yeah. was sort of symbolic of like a he, he was 
he's not that much worse than he was the first time. And you know, we were taking the piss out of him the first time. Like it's it's there's been a continual deterioration, but he's yeah. been he's been unfit for the longest time. Yeah, but this was a I mean th- that that particular debate it was it was a crystallization of of the deterioration, right? Like it was like yeah. he, he had fumbles like that, but like did he I can't remember a time when and also with the debate, you're supposed to like be super prepared for it. And like when he you know when he trails off like the way he did that was that that was indicative of like he's got to do the job for four years yeah yeah so you know even i think it made it, it made it it was it was an event that made it plain to everybody that yeah, yeah. but it, but it wasn't the, it wasn't the debate itself is my, my point they were making out like you know one bad debate before and it's not that's not the point no. it was uh, obama's first debate was yeah. quite bad as i understand it but he he yeah, yeah, that around yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I, I, his favorite, his favorite tick of mine though was when he was just, he just he got lost in a sentence or forgot what he was saying, and then he just go, "Come on, man! Yeah. <laughs> come on, man! Come, come on, Jack! On, come on, Jack! Come well, I, on. I, I like the guy. I like the, the time where there was someone who uh, was at one of his his events, um, and he was talking about something like how how the DNC maybe treated Bernie Sanders or something, and then mm. uh, and then Joe Biden just went up to him and goes. Listen here, fat. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, that was a town hall thing. Wasn't the it? town yeah, hall yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. I, that's that was almost like I don't know what was he like because that's not really an insult. That's just like a you're just you're just expressing a characteristic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, yeah. I think he referred to, to. Did you ever hear him telling that story about when he was a lifeguard at a pool in? I get I don't know like the. 40s or 50s in like a black neighborhood and he, and he told the story of like these black gangs and they would put like razor blades in um in water butts so that they got rusty you know so if you, you got somebody you got his face, he just went off and it involved you know people putting palm oil in their hair and it just it sounded like like the most <laughs> old man story yeah and the point of the story was was supposed to be like how he you know he's great with black people <laughs> Yeah, yeah that actually that kind of reminds me of a ben carson thing he always yeah like he had a he had a sort of a similar story which i believe actually turned out to be fake but i'm not <laughs> well biden did the, the I, I assume you know about this in i can't remember what it was this was years ago when he was running for something senate or something and he literally copied an anecdote that neil kinnock gave about his early life oh wow yeah, he literally ripped off a Neil Kinnock anecdote and presented it as as if this was his life story, and he got caught out for it. That's amazing. Yeah, it was it was something Kinnock had said in in Parliament, I think, or in some some campaign or something. And he just he, he literally well, it wasn't like you know they had similar experiences. He literally ripped it off like word for word, basically. So, because it seems to me that one of the distinctions between American politics and British politics is that American politics is like. They seem to love the uh, this like personalized like narrative of of you know the yeah well they would I think uh, they try some of, some of the leaders tried to do that in our debate mm. um, the son of a toolmaker Thomas Holfinger like my dad yeah son of a toolmaker but like uh, a lot of them were doing you know I, I you know I, I connect with this issue because mm. my you know my family mm. has gone through it and I don't want that mm. I think in America I think the president is a somewhat fictional position I think you accept. A degree of fictionalization, yeah, and and for them to say things like you know, um, tell. I mean, you kind of see it in the West Wing, right? You mm. have the speech writers writing uh, speeches for the president and including anecdotes that that the speech writers are just making up or have heard somewhere, yeah. And then the president presents this anecdote as if it's something that happened to them, mm. and no, like nobody's fooled by that. We, it's just this acceptance that the that the president is sort of a hyperial figure. Yeah. Like, a, you know, a, a, almost like an amalgamation of, you know, what, what, what the ideas that we want to pour into the figurehead of our nation. And I sort of, I, I, I sort of accept that to an extent. Like, yeah. that's fine. Well, that's how, like, human minds seem to internalize stuff. I mean, that's, that's why, like, with a lot of stories in the Bible, like, the, the, the onus isn't necessarily on whether or not they're literally true or not. It's the, it's, yeah, the, yeah, it's yeah. the way yeah. that the story. Yeah, I'll agree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you know, Robin Hood and King Arthur, you know, not not mm. many. I mean, I'm you know, they may have been historical figures to some extent, but you know, there are amalgamations at this point. They represent our ideas about ourselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it it seems to be you know, it's just a, the the human mind works in a narrative way, right? Mm. 
But I don't think I don't think British political figures have ever really, not to the same extent, been that. And I find it uncomfortable when they try to be yeah. that because we're not. That's not how our system works. It's not. It's not like snobbish. Like that's too good, or we're not good. We're too good for that. I don't mean that. I think it's just we have our parliamentary system is very different from a presidential. System. Yeah, and I don't think we're expected you know, to like our leaders. We're just ex- we I, not in the same way. No, you know that whole like the, in in American politics is very important. You know, the the, the average person would go for a beer with this person. Mm. Like, who gives a shit? Exactly. <laughs> I don't think yeah. we have that. Like, <laughs> who would have gone for a beer with Margaret Thatcher? Incredibly popular, but nobody would have wanted to hang out with her. Exactly. I don't think anyone wants to hang out with Keith Starmer. But like, oh god, can you imagine? <laughs> so tell me again about what your father did for a living. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, I'd, I'd love the bit I love the bit in the in the one on one interviews that he did and the I can't remember who it was quite well known I think BBC journalist and she asked him uh, can you tell us a little bit about your personality and his response was <laughs> I dedicated all my life to public service it's like <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah hanging out hanging out with hanging out with Keith it'd be like you get home in the evenings right right time for some fun and he gets out like gets his spreadsheets out yeah, his spreadsheets or his t- Times Crossword or yeah, it's... I think Times Cross. I thought Times Crossword, but that was like, no, that's far too exciting. <laughs> far too exciting for him. Uh, yeah. So, so... is it John Majorish? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, less. Uh, the problem with John Major. I think John Major. By when I say things like this, obviously the context is in you know he's a Tory mm. prime minister, but in that context, I I kind of like John Major honestly. But the, the problem with John Major was that he was he was a figure of failure because he was mm. you know he was at the wrong time to you know blah blah blah. Yeah. But he did a lot for the Northern Irish Peace Project. Anyway, I think yeah, I think Starmer's mm. got a lot of the a lot of the John Major about him. But he's he's like surrounded by success rather than failure is the is the difference. Yeah, I think to be honest, I think John Major would actually be all right to go with a drink with. He wouldn't be the most exciting. Yeah guy but no i think he'd be fun yeah yeah he seemed quite he seemed very genuine yeah yeah and I, I, and of course uh bit an image bit an image being a you know a satire program in the in the uk in the 80s with puppets and they characterized him as, as a human that was entirely gray <laughs> yeah. and he would go home he would go home at night and eat a bowl of gray peas <laughs> <That's how> they, <laughs> they oh him, my is... god yeah I, I I guess so. So so in America they've got they got Kamala Harris VP by the looks of it. She seems to be the. Um, the... I hope not. I think there's like a zero point zero zero, you know, blah blah blah, one percent chance that they actually have a contested convention. I would love to see that. We th- there's not been a contested convention in America since 1952. I can't imagine well, a, a broken that happening, convention yeah. as they call it. I can't imagine it happening, but I, w- I would love for them, for somebody, I mean, it could, you know, this is literally never going to happen. I'm not, I'm not implying that I think this is a possibility, but, you know, like Bernie gets nominated from the floor and actually, you know, like some, some yeah. cinematic thing happens. I would love that. Yeah, I think, I think. But, but you no, know, more than likely it's, it's Kamala. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, l- large, the thing that sort of makes it seemingly obvious is that all of the possible competitors have, uh, have have endorsed Kamala, endorsed and I feel yeah, that that was clearly, set... I mean, that's not that was that was like somebody's made that happen. That hasn't just organically yeah. happened, right? I I would imagine it's someone someone in 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 the Biden campaign, maybe someone like Obama. They say that he's doing a lot behind the scenes to to get Biden to stand aside. Well, what I, one thing I've heard is that there's there's what's happening right now, and the reason that Obama hasn't um, endorsed. Uh, Kamala Harris is that there's there's a sort of factional infight between the Obama faction and the Clinton faction. All right, uh, and I don't I don't know whether that's true, but it's certainly plausible. Mm. Basically, Obama like what what this person I was reading was suggesting is that Obama's setting himself up to be like the grandee of the Democratic Party. He thinks Kamala's going to lose. He mm. sort of tricked the Clintons into supporting Kamala, so they are attached to a loser, and then he he inherits like the most powerful position within the DNC. And gets to rebuild it, which don't no idea whether that's true or not, but it's plausible. Uh, is it plausible? They don't usually think that far ahead, do they? Uh... I think I think Obama. I think Obama's a bit of a bit of a. And he's very boring as well, but he's you know he's a planner. Yeah, but yeah, he. I mean, he. There were a lot of times during his his presidency where he could have done things 
but felt like he decided not to because he he sort of anticipated failure. And he was... I think... Uh, go on, sir. And he was locked up for a lot of his time. And... But there were, th like, performative things that he could have done as president that could have energised people, and I think he failed to do that. So, like, sometimes it's, you know, with politics, it's not always a case of uh, shooting to win, but sometimes it's a, it's a case of making enough noise that it then puts tangential pressure on other parts of the system, other people, uh, raises public awareness. I think, Democrat, kind of I think this is captured, actually, if you, if you rewatch The West Wing, this mm. is almost like in retrospect what it's about but i think Demo democrats are unwilling to they're always like we can do we could you know technically on paper we have the levers to do this thing but we can't afford it in terms of political capital mm. whereas republicans will get in control and they're like we're going to pull the levers that we you know we always implied and said you know like the like the roe v wade thing repealing yeah. roe v wade um i mean that happened under a democrat but uh, they will just, and they're like, fuck the political capital. This is what we're here to do. Yeah. I wish the Democrats would do that. And I don't think Obama particularly wanted to change much. I don't think he was a particularly um, progressive president, but I do, I do wish that when they, uh, Biden certainly could have with the uh, student loan, he could have, there were mechanisms whereby he could have, um, uh, which he said he would do. It was one of his uh, campaign promises in the first, first time he was elected. Isn't, isn't there a fair amount of student loan debt forgiveness? No, no. No, because he, he he did it in a, he did it in the way that was most susceptible to being challenged. Oh, uh, I forget I forget the details, but but but, the, but the, mm. there was a way for him to do it. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Essentially, he could have done it, but it's like, well, yeah, yeah it's political capital, blah blah blah. We can't afford it, and it's like, no, we, you. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he actually wanted to do it. I think that's why he did it that way. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't know. Like the trouble is, you, you see the Democrats being bad at politics time and time again. And mm. I know that there there are a lot of theories as to suggest the tactical fumble um, and how that links in. Well, with I don't their, think. Sorry, sorry. And how how that links saying. in with their donors, because uh, you yeah. know re Republicans can sort of sell themselves out in a way that Democrats can't. Democrats still have to have mm -hmm. the facade of of being vaguely left. I think it's essentially, I think it's in the vested interests of the Democrats to not get anything done because then they can keep fundraising on that issue. Like like if if they. If they, you know, which they could have done initially, once and for all, you know, make uh, abortion legal forever, mm -hmm. then they lose that. They lose every time, you know, a Republican governor does something crazy, they lose that ability to fundraise over it. So I, I think it's, I think it's, because it's, uh, it's a political party, but it's also a business, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a fundraising thing that, you know, creates a great living for a huge number of people. Um, and I think that, that aspect of it, just, yeah, it, it's just, it, they are almost hardwired for failure because that's, how they make more money yeah but i think most political discussions among anyone with more than a couple of brain cells it tends to come back to that issue of money and politics right like it, mm. it, it seems to be almost at this point the bottleneck and if you can't like it seems like there's there's this there's this the uh sort of so you know you've got the the powers that be the you know the donors the so basically you've got the donor class and they, uh, it, it's like the Dems can't really sort of get rid of them, otherwise they're just disarming themselves. But at the same time, they mm. can't bring in any vaguely like left-wing policies because it will affect the donor class. And there's no shortage yeah. Of, yeah. Uh, of, of corporations even donating to both the Democrats and the Republicans um, because then they can yeah. hold the, oh, yeah. the withdrawal of that money over them. Uh, I think mm -hmm. Google, I remember seeing Google put a lot of money on, on oh, both. Oh, no, yeah, I think, parties. if anything, I think, like, the majority of corporations donate to both, or they donate to whichever side they think is going to win, mm. at least, if not donating to both. But I don't think, I don't think just taking donations out of campaign financing would, because essentially, we have very hard limits on that over here. Like, yeah. you, you, you cannot actually donate very much to, um, yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and we're not really, in terms of being beholden to capital, we're not really any better off here. Because it's not just it's not just about the direct donations. It's it's about lobbying. You know, the, the the corporations can fund you know endless expert lobbyists. Yeah. It's also you know the revolving door between politics and industry, politics and media. You know, politics and lobbying. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many ways that that money can influence politics, even without direct uh, campaign financing. I think that that in itself, I don't think solves problems. 
It doesn't, work. but it, it seems like you the, the other problems in America in particular can't be solved until you stop that one problem. Because also with campaign finance reform, it's one of the most popular bipartisan issues. So it's, 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 but it's, I mean, it would certainly be a good step for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not like an issue. I can't imagine many people making, like, I don't think many people are going to flip between Republican or Democrat based on ca campaign finance reform, despite the fact that something like 70% mm -hmm. of all voting Americans are on the same page with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that should go hand in hand with um, just make, because like we, we've just had an election, right? <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. almost like, you know, while the Americans have been having their election, we could, we, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, ours took seven weeks. The American election, I think technically it takes about a year, but if you count, if you count from when they start campaigning in New Hampshire and Iowa, mm -hmm. it's, it's more like um, a year and a half. It's like, it's, it's 18 months, right? Uh, yeah. Or two years. I mean, it, yeah. Um, which is absurd. That is an absurd, and you know, that, that's part of why you need so much money. You need to keep running those TV ads for two fucking years, you know, and, 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 and it's not just TV ads anymore, but you know what I mean? Like, that's part of why you need so much money. Uh, it's also, you know, for a sitting president, having to campaign for essentially 18 months is, is a huge amount of time out mm -hmm. of them doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, yeah, and, and the not just president, governors, senators, all the way down a ticket. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw it broken down for me. It's like they're spending something like four hours a day fundraising or something crazy like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, my God, I, that's a hot, to be honest, I wouldn't even like to do that. Like, it's just, that's no, just... No. If if you're if you're I mean we're idealizing but if, if you know if you're if you have a, you know the civic the civic responsibility gene and you're, you're interested in you know public service mm. and then you get into you know the senate or whatever and you've got to spend most of your time just fundraising and like awful yeah I I wonder if like th that could potentially lessen with social media like with like older politicians are obviously notoriously bad at social media with some exceptions but you know the sort of the aoc generation do you think that they could sort of circumnavigate that a little bit well i think i think what well, i think part of the reason why um bernie and to a lesser extent trump are despised by you know the political political and, and, and media class is mm. is that they prove that you don't need the big donors like bernie was funded by you know overwhelmingly like small donations from normal people right and that's also to a large extent, true of Trump, he gets a lot of donations, you know, small donations from normal people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the donor class do not want that because they do not want to lose, you know, that influence. Mm. Although that being said, I think the the media class might not necessarily, like, I know that, that obviously media benefit hugely from not only the, the views that the elections bring in, but also the advertising. And mm. but but with um, Trump, and I think, I think maybe you can make this argument for Bernie is that they are interesting enough characters that they're they're like they'll bring in lots of views for the media like the media like as much as they you know f outrage about trying I think, to no, yeah, the, uh, I think they enjoy you know that's mm. why they give they give these and you know farage over here that's why they get mm. so much airtime is because honestly just people find them fun to watch yeah so they get views but i think i think the pertinent thing here is that you know the the, the media organizations are owned by the billionaires who are members of the donor class that's the problem there that's why yeah. that can only go so far yeah but it does sort of in a way seem that they, they're in a win-win scenario oh yeah yeah <laughs> no absolutely yeah mm. yeah so, the, yeah and also, with, I mean, Trump does get some fairly, like, big money donors, right? Like, um, APAC yeah, is, for is sure. yeah. funneling yeah. Yeah, untold yeah, yeah. amounts of cash with him. I was quite amused, actually, that um, he, uh, he was, uh, Trump was saying in one of his speeches that uh, Elon Musk's PAC is giving him $45 million a month. And then, like, in an interview, Elon Musk sort of kind of rode that back a little bit. It was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, those two, right? Those two together, Elon Musk and Donald Trump, they like, they can, they, they know that if they can work together, they're kind of unstoppable. But at the mm -hmm. same time, they, they hate each other because they're such like yeah. egomaniacs. So yep, yep, yep. there's this yep. the, the, and different, different, very different kinds of assholes mm, as well. Very different kinds of assholes. It's yeah, like politically perhaps on the same page in a lot of ways, but or at least. I don't, again, I don't think Trump has politics, but in terms of how he's positioning himself, excuse me. Yeah, it's it's 
Yeah, because uh, I mean, Elon Musk, of course, was famously in Trump's cabinet, which so like Elon Musk keeps talking about. Well, he, he spoke a long time for about how he was like, oh, uh, you know, n- not Democrats, not Republicans. You know, I'm like a swing voter. or something. You were in the Trump administration for a spell. <laughs> like you can, you can only be so partisan if if, you, if you're working in well, the White House. I mean, the part, part, part of that is, is just that, uh, you know, American. Well, the, the two big parties in America, they're not political parties in the sense that we think about them in, in Europe or or really, you know, the, the rest of the inverted commas democratic world, right? Mm. They're not membership parties. And neither of them. No. No, you reg- do you register um, with the Electoral Commission or something? I, 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 they don't even... No, I, th- I think when you, when you insert... It, I think this varies state to state, but in... in and this is bizarre to me. Uh, in uh, When you register to vote, you register to vote as, as either a, a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent, which is... I don't know why that... I don't know what... Well, I don't know the purpose of that. I don't really understand that at all. And I know, I know its function is that, you know, again, this varies state to state, but in certain states, if you want to take part in the Republican primaries, you have to be registered as a, as a Republican voter, right? Yeah, is it? Oh, sorry, um, not the mic there. Is, is it part of this, um, like faux idea of the primaries being part of the official process? Because, of course, in a in what is fundamentally a two party system, you have to like you you have two choices. But if you only literally have two two pre selected choices, then that's a pretty sorry excuse for democracy. So is is the illusion there that you can choose who you want for primary, and then that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. That sounds. That sounds. But at right. the same time, Democrats were also challenged on. Uh, I think it was like Biden skipping a lot of the primary process in his re-election, and I think their mm-hmm. legal argument for that was, "We're the DNC. We can do what we like. We're a private party." So I think <laughs> it does seem yeah, like yeah. it's. It's like yeah. I don't know. They're flexible on the idea. When when <laughs> when they want to like yeah. lock out third yeah. parties, it's like it's yeah. okay. We have a primary. Anyone can stand in our primary or that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, like, oh, oh, they're, they're doing well though. Our choice is not doing so well. So yeah. yeah, that's the end of the primary. Sorry. Yeah, and it, that, that seems to be how American politics works. It's like basically you just mm-hmm. make the argument at the time, and like a lot of like, ex- uh, which Supreme- is an incredibly that's an incredibly conservative um, um, influence on politics, right? Be- because the, the 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 people who are control in control of the DNC or the RNC are you know former presidents, former staffers, but you know, former luminaries in 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 Republican and you know, failed presidential candidates and stuff like that. So it's mm. it's it's always like the old folk of the party make choosing who is the next leader. Yeah. In but in both parties. I mean, I, I, they failed with Trump because they didn't shut it down quick enough, but well, you know, the, the, yeah, Trump, Trump was a was, was a bizarre phenomena, really. I and mean, I think I think, he ended... I, think, I, think oh, I think that what that demonstrates actually is I think I think the, the the Republican Party in that sense is a bit more democratic than the yeah. Democrats. Which which always I always get thinking about is whether or not a left wing takeover of the Republican Party is actually possible. More plausible. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, obviously you wouldn't use a democratic based left wing. Uh, policy you would you would tailor it for the rhetoric of the of of the republicans i mean but... you could certainly see you know this this is the kind of uh left-wing stuff that's doing well in in in, in uh, a lot of places in europe is you could see like a, a socially conservative economically left-wing po- uh faction doing well mm. and yeah which you're actually starting you know yeah you're starting to see with some Republicans, you're start, starting to see, like, in, in odd places, they're supporting what would usually be considered quite left, left-wing economic. Yeah, well, there's, um, and, and also there are, like, there are, there are you, you can sort of wrap things up in capitalist rhetoric. There was a climate change panel, it was hosted by Bernie Sanders, but the, but someone on the panel was a Republican mayor of a city, I forget which city it was, and mm-hmm. they expanded uh, renewable energy, like just they they were like it was like the second most good city for renewable energy or something like that in in the whole mm-hmm. in the whole America, and it had a Republican uh, mayor who who sort of spearheaded the process. So yeah, I mean, well, that, that's that's one of the sort of the contradictions or ironies, you know, within well, it's one of the demonstrations why capitalism is is kind of at this point a failing system in the. Mm-hmm. In that going very green would be incredibly good for capitalism. Mm. You got these, you know, these these new industries, these new uh, areas of innovation. Uh, it would be great, you know, stimulating jobs, stimulating. You could have 
you could have the West as you know a manufacturing center again. Yeah. The countries that you know w- w- leading this stuff would would be would do amazingly well economically, but it's a challenge to the vested interests of oil. That's that's the you know fundamentally what it comes down to. Yeah. I think everybody knows that it would be good for capitalism. <laughs> you know, it's not even it's not even mm. capitalism, you know, inherently being against these things. It's it's the vested interest within capitalism being against these things. Yeah. I kind of think about that with um uh universal basic income. Is the universal basic income yeah, is yeah. It, it is just ongoing economic stimulus. But mm-hmm. but, but it's like be, so you give you know you give you give everyone thousand quid a month, let's say and and mm-hmm. you know the people people spend it on clothes food bills groceries you know like most people are probably not going to be spending it on holidays if we're honest right yeah. they're going to be spending <laughs> yeah, it on yeah. just generally materially improving their lives and mm-hmm. all of that goes funnels up either back to the to the government or 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 or, or upwards right like it it does you know like well, it, go, it goes to the businesses you spend the money with. It, it's, yeah. It's like you say, it's a permanent uh, fiscal stimulus, yeah. Yeah, but the trouble um, is, of course, is that people get to decide where they spend their money then. So so presumably companies would prefer the economic stimulus just to bypass the customer and go straight to them, right? No, I think, no, honestly, I think if you just put it to businesses, mm. you know, do, do you want this to happen? I, th- I think they say yes. I think what it is, is it's a step towards socialism. I think that's what they're terrified of. It's a step towards disconnecting people's ability to live from their the necessity of mm. wage, wage work essentially i think that's i think that's what upsets them about it same as with working from home yeah working from like working from home is better for businesses it would lower their costs right mm-hmm. but what they're afraid of is losing control <laughs> yeah I, I mean it's also tied into you know that some you know the businesses that own businesses also own the places that businesses rent to you know blah 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 that's part of it too um they're scared yeah. of diminishing their assets but i think it's more the other thing yeah well the 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 property uh, property in london of course is is top commodity right so if everyone mm-hmm. starts working from home that that basically devalues all a lot of property in london doesn't it well only to an extent though because you know a lot of the property the kind of properties that people buy in london they're sitting empty anyway they're buying them as, a, as an asset mm. um the, you know whose price just inflates over time they don't really care you know if you're getting an income from it through rent that's a bonus but that's not the that's not the major reason why you're buying which is why you know they they, they will own all these empty properties they're just going up mm. they're just going up in, in in value all the time and it's part of why they don't want to buy new houses because you know the more the more the more you build the that's a, that's a deflationary pressure there'd still be yeah. inflation but it's less of it yeah totally and and that's why you get a lot of uh conservatives being opposed to new new house building mm-hmm. which is sort of contrary to thatcher right where thatcher's kind of idea was um people get more conservative when they own a home mm-hmm. so yep. give, make everyone own their own home let them buy their council houses mm-hmm. let you know all that kind of stuff i think, I think that's proven out i think you know because mm. a lot of so many people rent now and rent is you know well rent is what it is yeah. Yeah, that's that's pushed a lot of people towards that you know economically left positions yeah you know, she wasn't wrong there's that chart that shows that about halfway through gen x people stopped getting left wing as they get got older yeah yeah, yeah which yeah. which correlates very smoothly with the rate of of or the the rate at which people own property uh, and also how like people are owning their own homes later in life uh, if at all and mm-hmm. um yeah, and I think I think yeah, I think like Thatcher basically cracked the code, and she ensured conservative popularity for basically up until Liz Truss or something like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it's you know it's a political tradition that goes all the way back to you know Jefferson. Just it's it's, it's liberalism mm. really. It's just you know a property a class of property owning people who are who are inherently invested in in in, in the, you know the liberal economy. Yeah, um, which it potentially is workable. You know, if you could get every, mm. the problem is that you. A system like that, you can't have everybody being a property owner. You need you need an underclass. You need an, an exploited workforce. Um, that that's why that can't sort of lead to a, a, a utopic kind of situation. Yeah, like it, it sort of it, it sort of only goes so far. But um... yeah, uh, but I don't know. So maybe I... To... Mm-hmm. I was just going to say back to so the the fundamental. Do you think so? Assuming assuming Kamala's the pick. Mm-hmm. And putting whoever she chooses as a running mate aside, do you think the Democrats' chances of winning this election have now improved? Yes, and more than I initially in thought. More than I initially yeah, I thought. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah. 
time. Yeah, yeah. My suspicion was, uh, it, they would have lost with Biden. They would have lost with Harris. They probably would have just been destined to lose. Uh, mm -hmm. But watching like a lot of people get energized behind Kamala, uh, watching her grassroots fund fundraising basically go through the roof, um, and 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 so many groups sort of backing her, very what feels like authentically enthusiastically. Mm -hmm. I I think there's I think there's a chance. I was watching uh, a political live stream where someone was breaking down the electoral college votes on on um, what's it two two seventy or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, yeah. And they uh, and they sort of worked out that actually, it's if if the winds blow in the right direction, it's it's not impossible. Um, and combine that with the fact that people have already stopped talking about Trump's assassination attempt or not, the the assassination attempt on Trump. Like that news seems to have blown over like really quickly. <laughs> That's that's really shocking, isn't it? Yeah, I've heard several people talk about that. Like it's you know it's what is it a week or two later, and we've kind of, like I've almost forgotten about it. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think in like in the nineties, eighties, nineties, even in, even into the early two thousands, I don't think that would have gone away so quickly as a. It it seems so it seems so unimportant at the time. Do you know what I mean? It was, yeah. Well, it missed. I don't know. I, don't I, I mean, it's more important it. to the guy that got got the, hit the bullet. To be honest, you know, that's the. No, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that, that was that was weird. But I, I think this. Yeah, I don't know. So there's a few things to sort of uh, offer as context for this. Mm -hmm. So first of all, as it stands in the national polls, um, uh, the the Democrats are behind by a few points, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. In order to win an election, the Democrats. Uh, if 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 it's if it's fifty fifty, then the Republicans win, mm -hmm. uh, just because of how um, the electoral college, how the electoral yeah. college, you know, the, 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 the way the votes are distributed. I mean, I, I think a lot of libs sort of blame that on gerrymandering. I think it's less gerrymandering and it's more where you know the, the Republican the, the Democrats get an excess of votes in California where they don't need them, and New York where they don't need them, and not enough in you know Iowa where they do need them. Yeah, um, uh, there was a massive gerrymandering operation in Florida to basically turn it red. Um, oh no, for sure. No, there is gerrymandering. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying there isn't gerrymandering. But the, the the thing that is important for me is gerrymandering is a democratic process. It's 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 Republican governors and Republican elected officials who do the gerrymandering. Mm. They they are elected knowing that this is going to happen. So you kind of can't really say that that's like a rigging of the system when it's what people have voted for. And also I think it's 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 far less important than just like certain states get more Democrat votes and certain states get more Republican votes. Um but but to win, um the Democrats need uh like three, four, five percentage points over the Republicans, right? Mm -hmm. So so the, the the ground to make up is bigger than it looks. Um I still th I don't think it looks good for the Democrats. I'm not sure how much this enthusiasm will last. I'm not sure mm. how much People will continue. I mean, because Biden just people were unenthused anyway. Yeah. There's not much, there's not much exciting policy. Um, so yeah, they're, they're unenthused, unenthused anyway. Then Biden's you know obvious unfitness for the job uh, like really turned people off. So I think you're going to get some of that back. But you know the policy is still is still is still unenthusing. Kamala's to the right of Biden, I would say. Um, and there was a third thing that I forget. Like I, I still, I still think it's an uphill battle, but I, but I, I think it's less than I thought it would be a week ago. If you know what mm. I mean. So I, I don't know the minutia of. of... Oh, sorry, God, God was the third thing. If, if they're ah, thinking yeah. that young people are going to turn out in droves, I don't know. Not, not, not with that. Not Gaza. But yeah, sorry. Well, okay. I, there's um. Okay, so um, I, I don't know the minutia of of Kamala's uh policy but i have heard people say that it's it's more left than like you you might think so mm. i'm hoping that that might sort of manifest itself i remember in the primaries that she was relatively outspoken in favor of medicare for all or at least a universal health care system so all, yeah but when, when i say, I, I mean yeah. actual not rhetorical stuff that's easy for because they're all all democrat any democrat running is in favor of medicare for all mm -hmm. or they you know they will at some point say they are but they've got no intention of actually doing it they've got no plan for doing it you know they know it's mm -hmm. not going to happen which is why they can say it i i i think she might be better on gaza uh she... again is it because okay so 
Keith is better than the Tories on Gaza, right? He said in Parliament that he wants a ceasefire and blah, blah, blah. But it's all, yeah. it's purely rhetoric. He's not doing anything. He's not changing yeah. anything. It's entirely rhetorical. And that, that, that I, I, I know I'm sort of nitpicking here, but I, yeah. but I think, especially with the Democrats and with the Labour Party, I think you've got to separate what they say they want to do with what they actually intend to do. It's a very fucking different thing on, on the, on the centre, centre left. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it, surely with Kamala, Kamala, we we all we have is is the rhetoric at this point, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. But I think we can. I think we can judge certain things as either I, she's not going to change the position on Gaza. Like, I, I, like you know, I, I would stake my hat on that. Like, that's just not going to happen. The, you know, the idea of either of the two big American parties not supporting the shit out of Israel is absurd. Well, you know, unless, I, unless, I, even, I, in fact, even if Bernie took that, I don't think he could have managed that. No, now. Bernie was Bernie is, yeah, like he 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 has had some, he's had some good moments and bad moments on 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 Gaza. Um, but what I don't know if the, I mean, this is still in the under the umbrella of rhetoric. But uh, I believe Kamala Harris is not meeting with Netanyahu when he is visiting the states soon. Uh, which, yeah, again. <laughs> yeah, but it's still I mean, retro. Biden, Biden moved in that direction, you know, but 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 the funding can it's you know the thing that matters is that you know the international pressure, sure, mm -hmm. you know, but not 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 lack of support, like actual pressure on Israel to you know to to sign a ceasefire or whatever, and the, you know, the funding. And if they're not going to cut off the funding, then they can whatever they say is is bull. Did you see, did you see the thing the thing that Corbyn said uh, a couple of months ago? Um. It was, I think it was in the run-up to the 20, 2017 election when, when it looked like he had a sniff at you know, actually winning. Mm. And he said that like, some deep state um, spook basically took him aside mm -hmm. and said, like, look, you, you, you might end up as prime minister. The one rule, the one rule that you can't break is that you support Israel no matter what. Like, that is unconditional. That is part of being prime minister. Mm. And, you know, if you, like, the implication being if you don't, you know, the deep state is going to come and fucking get you. I might, I might be misrepresenting that slightly, but it was, it was, it, that was the gist of it. Mm. That's interesting. It's, uh, it, I suppose it's, you know, certainly believable, right? Mm. I mean, it's Corbyn saying it and he's not, he's not known for, you know. Yeah, he's not, mm, he's not, he's not known for, you know, because the thing is for Corbyn as well, is like, he, as far as I can tell, like most of the, Pro Gaza stuff he says it's like relatively balanced, like it's relatively sensible. It's not. He doesn't. He doesn't like. I think people. When, whenever people say, "Oh, he said this," he's trying to paint him as a Hamas sympathizer. I. I don't. Mm. I don't think he is. I think he just genuinely just no. wants less people to die, like <laughs> like most people, right? I think Corbyn. And this this was part of pop. pop uh, yeah. Wow, I just did a Biden. Um, <laughs> this was part of. Um, Corbyn's problem, I think, in terms of in terms of engaging with the electorate, was that what what Corbyn his main policy area area that he was interested in was foreign policy and he mm. anti war. He is he is he is one of those like old school seventies Labour anti imperialism anti war kind of figures, yeah. right? Um, which is something that doesn't enthuse the public at all. <laughs> and it was John McDonnell who had to like you know bring him back to no you know domestic policy, economics, you know that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I uh, can't remember what my point was, but yeah, I, th I think he, I think, well, yeah, I think he is just a fundamentally anti-war person. I mm. think, I, I, and I think, I think he's, I think he's almost unquestionable on that. I think he's, he's, it, that comes from his heart, I very much feel. Yeah. And I think it also comes from, I think he has a disdain of, of the, the rhetoric of war as well, because yeah, yeah. a lot of the time, like you know it's it, war is particularly narrativized um you know you've got the bad guys yeah. you've got the good guys if you so much as sympathize with the the human rights violations we're doing against the bad guys you are you are sympathizing you're a traitor you're, a traitor, you're sympathizing with the bad guys exactly and i mean it's mm. not just us that does that i think that's just that's just a side effect of war right but it's like during yeah uh you know like uh good friday agreement times and stuff like that where it's like showing any sort of sympathy to to Sinn Féin or even any kind of outreach to, or negotiating yeah, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. ira was yeah. seen as 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 traitorous um mm -hmm. but at the end of the you know, day let alone even 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 saying the ira you know the 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 Repu the irish republican position is the is the morally correct position you like that was that was a massive mm. extreme view which you know to me seems a very reasonable thing to say yeah so I, it's yeah. So uh, 
it it and I think Corbyn didn't like that. I think he played against that, and I and and I think that he wasn't mm-hmm. scared of talking about nuance, and I think that could uh, that typically yes. gets used against you. God, I would love, I would love if we had more nuance. It'd be great, wouldn't policy. it? Yeah, I would love it. Just, uh, just for a politician to go, look, it's. This, I'm not going to give you a sign bite, sound bite. This is a very complicated issue. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's the pros and cons, and I can go through the pros and cons, and I can tell you how how you know what what I take from that. But you know, <laughs> this is a comp- anybody who gives you a black and white picture is is lying to you. Yeah, it's like going into the accountant's office and going line go up or line go down. One pick pick the answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've invested in Beanie Babies, Pokemon cards, and property. Am I richer or am I poorer now? Which is much simpler. That has much less nuance to it. You can give a... <laughs> yeah, I, uh... yeah, you know, and think like the the because I thought I thought he was great on the EU. You know, we we've said before yeah. that I can't remember what he said, but like he said, I'm seven tenths in and what, three tenths out or whatever. Yeah, um, but you know, the EU was complex, nuanced to idea. Anybody who's black and white on that is a fucking idiot. Yeah. Immigration is a very complex issue. I'm not for a mm. second condoning you know the you know the racist stuff that comes through it, but mm. it is a complex issue. It, you know, it intersects with. Social issues, economic mm-hmm. issues, blah blah blah, and, it, and it's not, yeah, and it, and it changes as well. Like there will be, I pre- yeah. presumably, yeah. there'll be some years where, 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 yeah, like it differs, right? Like it, it always seems I to me. Cor- that... Corbyn, mm. uh, as I would, would like to take this back to it. You know, he he would take a hum, uh, almost a humanistic view mm. of it. He'd say that like borders are essentially an abuse, mm. which I would agree with. He, that's probably where he would want to start, but that's not anywhere near where the public is thinking of this. Yeah. And again, that requires that requires nuance and that requires also mm. I think it requires like a degree of one world thinking. And I think that's one of the problems. It's like everyone like I think yeah. you know, nationalism generally I I always find very sussy, whether or not it's with Plaid Cymru or or like the United States, you know, stars and stripes type of thing. Mm. It it just seems that... I think that's something I think I think internationalism is something that even the left has backed away from. They yeah. even the left will like characterize things in terms of national interest and stuff, which they have to i get it or they think they have to but yeah for, I, I do i do blame to a large extent the media for yeah i think deleting I, new ones from politics essentially I yeah think and i think word. i actually genuinely i think this is where part of my idea for the fediverse party sort of comes through it's it fundamentally at its its core it is looking at another person and seeing a human before seeing anything else yeah yeah. And because That's, I've got yeah, I've got something to say about mm-hmm. that with regard to the shooting, actually, with the, mm-hmm. you know these attempts, like not that I saw people overtly celebrating it, but I I want to say it is a mm-hmm. fucking tragedy that that civilian got shot. Yeah, like it's tragic that that man lost his life, and, and mm-hmm. I think you know the, the the sort of blue no matter who libs would go like, no, he's at a Trump rally, therefore he is a racist, mm-hmm. he is a blah blah. We don't we don't know any of that, you know. Okay. He, well, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Maybe. But he, essentially, he's a human being who got shot for mm. being at a political event. And wasn't he a fire chief? Yeah. Did you see, did you see the Trump speech at the at the uh, the convention? Oh God, I think I did. I, I did no. Oh no, I haven't. That's on my to watch list. But I hear it's okay, it's I'm awful. Not, I've not watched the whole thing yet. So the first like twenty or thirty minutes is him just telling his personal story of the of the assassination, and it's it's quite mm. moving even. Um, but then he, they bring on the um, the uniform and mm. and helmet of the firefighter mm. dude, uh, and Trump Trump walks up up to it because it's arranged mm. like a human figure, you know, the mm, uniform yeah. and then the hat on top. Yeah. He walks up to it, puts his arm around it, and gives the helmet a little kiss. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> did you see that? It's very strange. Saw... Very strange, but kind of like very, I don't know, very human and touching. Like I don't mind that. But then he goes, then he sort of took a left turn and and went on his usual, you know, polemic mm. rant. I saw, I saw him blow a kiss to Hulk Hogan. He kisses a lot. He's a big kisser. Like <laughs> it's... The fuck? he does kiss a lot. He does kiss. Yeah, a lot. it's like very um, French. The Hulk, the Hulk Hogan thing was fucking embarrassing. Oh my words! Yeah, I it. The, the 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 right wing celebrities always like they always come out and it's kind of like also Am uh, was it Amber Heard was there was Amber, it no Amber, Amber Rose. Rose Amber Rose I'm getting my Amber's mixed up Amber Rose run me Amber Roses uh hang on a minute I will uh I <laughs> terrible she, I think she's a socialite hang on a minute Amber Rose right I'm gonna I've got the little thing on the screen um American model rapper television personality first gained attention after starring on. A uh, music video for Young Yeezy's 2008 single "Put On." Okay, uh, that's yeah. Well, I stopped paying uh, attention to pop culture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
she she's kind of a uh i was gonna say i don't know like not necessarily a controversial figure but um a lot of republicans hate her right right um i think some of that might be racism i think some of that might be just generally a, yeah a hip-hop style human being a hip-hop style human being absolutely yeah so i don't know i've got a daily mail article up so you know mail online <laughs> it's, a, it's a showbiz uh but yeah she spoke at the uh the republican national convention as well um <laughs> and yeah uh, it's, uh kid i'm sure kid rock was there oh yeah no he's always there isn't he? yeah i uh that's, that's all i know him from now uh is is like republican <laughs> stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> but they didn't get that country singer guy because he was like like that? so th there was this viral like youtube video of this guy um singing a country music song and it went and and he was basically he was like it was so real he was just a man with a guitar singing about the american <laughs> like you know angst at the moment and um and then like people like marjorie taylor green and uh matt gates and everything were like this guy he gets it he gets it and then he came back and said i'm just a simple country guy but those are the people i'm talking about that are bad <laughs> <laughs> that was an awful accent and i'm sorry that's probably very offensive oh, sorry, i love it <laughs> i can't i'm not very good but, at yeah no, back, back, back to you back to you. um uh, chances of winning mm -hmm. I've really got. I've really got no idea. My my gut is still that Trump. Trump. Trump's gonna. I. Th I think there's gonna be a swell of enthusiasm for issue mm -hmm. Kamala. Kamala. Um. But I think. I think that will sort of dissipate as they realise it. That, that this is just another dismal centrist, and nobody can really get excited about that. You know, you get the diehard mm -hmm. blue, no matter who, who. If we don't vote for them, then it's gonna be the end of democracy and fascism. Like pretend like 2016 never happened. Um. I yeah, mean, have I, you, I, I, I mean, what do you make of the Project Twenty Twenty Five stuff? Oh, that that is, I I'm always cautious. To, like Trump is not a fascist, right? We just get that. Do we both agree on that? I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's an asterisk. There's nuance yeah. there. <laughs> I would say if Trump is a fascist, then every Republican president is, a, and probably every Democrat president for the last whatever is a fascist. Like he's not different enough from from any other republican president to be to be pushed into I mean, without getting into the you know if it doesn't quite fulfill these criteria then it's not fascism blah 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 you know things it it can be a very bad thing without being fascist well and i don't uh, think it has any of the characteristics that that are really like you know thinking of yeah i mean this is this is a long that that's that's a long conversation and i don't know yeah how yeah. useful it would ever ever be i think at the point where he enables fascists he puts fascists on the supreme court and all that kind of thing it's like a lot of fascism seems to orbit around him and i don't know if the distinct if if the distinction is whether whether or not the central figure there is a fascist. i mean there is a huge distinction between being liked by you know the the proud boys and whatever like mm -hmm. the groups like that they they are fascist and they like trump but they're tiny they are fucking minute you know whenever they try and do some sort of fascistic event or rally you get like mm -hmm. 200 people you know but a lot of this uh, stuff and, and, and always uh, like the count the counter protest is always much bigger than the yeah but a lot a lot of republican stuff is a small amount of people having a disproportionate amount of power so i think a lot of with with it seems well, with... no i think that's unfair that's that's you know that that is representative politics that's also you could also make that claim on the democrat side I... um they they also have you know a huge number of normal people who vote for them well i think the the, the the example i would immediately jump to of course is reproductive rights like reproductive rights left or right in 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 the states people generally are in favor of it like i think amongst american people there is still that ideal idealization of personal liberty and and libertarianism and well, that 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 just represents, as we've talked about before, the Republicans willing to pull the levers when they're in control of the levers. Yeah, the re Republicans have never, never, you know, I, I agree. That most of the American population wants um, wants abortion to be, you know, available to women mm -hmm. as needed. Um, but the Republicans have never they've never lied about the fact that if they can do this, they're going to do this. And they they set up they set, they put over decades they put all the pieces in place in order to do this. And then when they had all the pieces in place, they did it. The Democrats failed to stop them. Had the opportunity, you know, as, as soon as it became clear that the Supreme Court was court was overstepping its um, 
constitution because in terms of, in the constitution the supreme court is is given very little power yeah um and it's just sort of like it accrued accrued this power over time and the, the democrats could have corrected that at any point and didn't mm -hmm. uh ruth bader, uh, bader ginsburg did a stupid fucking shit where she'd rather symbolically resign when hillary was elected rather than you know under obama and yeah mm -hmm. we, we know you know then that didn't happen and she was replaced with a Republican, you know. It's, yeah. And then it's, Obama I, literally I, handed Republicans a, f a free seat um, because exactly, exactly. because they convinced so, him that like a year before the election was too early. It's like, you know, you should let your successor do it. And I think, to be honest, if he knew Trump and also when he knew Trump was getting involved, was getting um, looking to win or might have won or anything like that, he could he could have done it then. Like he could have just, you know, Well, the thing is, they didn't they didn't. No, nobody in in the sort of you know the liberal sphere believed that it was going to happen even even on election night i actually mm -hmm. recently um i recently rewatched the election coverage mm -hmm. uh of the 2016 american election and they were fuck, they were stunned they were shocked mm -hmm. nobody was expecting it even on the night well even trump was um, surprised and which is one of the arguments yeah. why why project 25 is is like more of a threat now than it was back then because at the time no one thought trump was ever going to get elected he got elected and then they weren't organ they didn't have a plan what to do next whereas this time they've yeah, got okay, a... okay okay sorry because th this is new this is nuanced and i think the context mm -hmm. matters so to go back to um so, so first of all, I think what you're saying, what that represents is that when in power, Republicans are competent and, and in terms of getting their agenda, you know, through mm -hmm. and Democrats are incompetent. I think that's all that represents. Um, I, I do think if, if we're going to talk about fascism, I mm -hmm. do think the most characteristic thing, because fascism, uh, people will criticize this as, you know, if we resort to historical definitions, then, you know, modern fascism might take a different form. But if, if it's so different, then why are we calling it fascism? Why, why can't it be bad? without being labelled fascism. But the thing that really characterised fascism was it was a, it, it's a street movement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a popular street movement that starts with street violence, with political street violence, and then builds from there. Mm -hmm. Whereas Trump is the opposite of that. He's a figure who, who the people who would want to do that kind of stuff like, but he, you know, he came in from the top down. He came in through the, you know, the, the, the Republican. Uh, and, and in terms of policy, mm -hmm. you know, he's not enacted anything remotely fascist. He's been a very run-of-the-mill uh, Republican. And, and I, do, I do think these people, these people that are saying that, you know, if, if Trump gets... I mean, again, it's very hard to make this argument when we've already had a Trump presidency, but they're still doing it. If Trump is elected, it's the end of democracy or, and or it's fascism. Mm -hmm. um, I think what that, when it turns out that, you know, say Trump gets elected, again, he's just a, no a normal Republican president, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fairly, you know, different presentationally, but in terms of policy, mm -hmm. a normal Republican president, then all you're doing is training people to not be afraid of fascism. <laughs> if you're saying this is fascism and it happens mm -hmm. and it's like, well, that, that was just like, you know, it was the same as when Bush was in power, mm -hmm. then you're just training to, you're, you're, you're de, what's the word? I can't think of right oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're normalizing people. Yeah. You're desensitizing people to fascism. And you're lying to them by saying every time somebody like Trump is up that this is going to be the end of democracy. Yeah. I mean, it almost is a little bit like the the, the boy that cried wolf. But... Absolutely. But, yeah. but, but we know the moral of the story is that one day the wolf comes and no one's ready for it. <laughs> well, no, it's, but exactly. And exactly. Because you've said it so many times, you desensitize people. And when it actually happens, nobody gives a shit. That's the exact point, right? Yeah. But is is Project Twenty Five it? But when fascism comes, it's not going to come through the ballot box, right? It never does. But but then we can talk about okay, if, if Trump isn't, I mean, feel free to argue that he is. But if Trump isn't fascism, he can still be something very bad. Yeah, yeah. Like here's the thing: it's like if, if you know, if you, you laid your set set down some some parameters by which you would define fascism, and then yeah, Trump wouldn't be a fascism. I guess my being an enabler or a figurehead of fascistic people, I I would say, yeah, probably probably I, either if not makes you a fascist, it makes you like, yeah, like it's. But anyway, like you say, I think Trump. I think Trump makes actual fascists like the proud boys or whatever i think he makes them feel validated and like they have a voice right yeah. i don't think he changes anything in concrete or material terms but what pushes people to that position is not a trump presidency it's it's endless democrats who will do fucking nothing for normal people that's what pushes people to fasc becoming fascist joining the proud boys yes 
Yeah, no, that 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 bit is. Yeah, if we yeah. want to if we want to talk about which is which is which is more likely to lead us to fascism, it's not a Trump presidency because that's almost like a re a release spell for that impulse. Mm. It's it's endless fucking dismal neoliberal. Yeah, yeah, no, that that bit, like you know, I, I I'm totally with you on that bit where where neoliberalism and that sort of uh, you know Clinton style Democrat. It just opened yeah. open the doors like for like normal for normal people, and I'm, that is not code for white working class. That's that's mm. working class people of you know whatever stripe. Mm. Um, they they are continually immiserated and disappointed and let down and disenfranchised mm. by dismal neo. Yeah, and and that's what pushes people to fashion. Yep, but Project Twenty Twenty Five, the stuff that they're. This, you know, it, I mean, that document's all over the place and kind of disagrees with itself in a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of places. But if you take the sort of average of what they're suggesting, what they're laying out, that 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 does sound like what is the end point of fashion. That does sound like a very regressive, ethno nationalist, um, ultra conservative. Uh, whether that's fascist or not, it's beyond the point. It sounds like that is a very, very bad. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's essentially the, yeah. the, the the Handmaid's Tale, right? Is what they, what yeah. they want. Yeah, but so, I don't think Trump. I don't think Trump would enact. Uh, he, he might nod to it rhetorically. He might do the odd bit and bob. But I don't think he's going to enact that as a you know as an entire party and say, "Yeah, now we are. Now we are this." That that will not. Happen. Most, mm. most most of the Republican machinery does not want that. Yeah, no. You, I mean, you're probably right. But so, do you think? So you so you wouldn't. So forget the term fascism. What about authoritarian? Yeah. How how authoritarian would you say Trump is? No more or less than any American. I think America is quite an authoritarian country. It likes to kid itself that it's not, but I think it is through through. I mean, and and this is arguably fascistic. This is why I say, I say that if Trump is because the media and the political class are entirely aligned in terms of what they want and what they present without any external force making them do that other than you know market mechanism mm. it you know because i mean the other definition of, of fascism is that it's a corporate state and mussolini i think the way mussolini said that was that uh, nothing nothing is outside the state everything is within the state and nothing is an enemy to the state right mm -hmm. um and you, you've kind of already got that. We've got that in most Western democracies, you know, with, with some little, you know, fringes of criticism. But fundamentally, everybody's everybody's in, in the same boat in, in terms of ideology. Yeah, yeah. Because, the, because the, the ideology represents the interest of billionaires. Billionaires are in control of the politicians, and they're in control of the media. So you know, hmm, so what, a what a you know, like so so a system of oligarchs then. Mm. Which is, so yeah, I think, yeah. I think uh, yeah. So so yeah, I think I think Britain, uh, America, to varying extents, <clears throat> other Western countries, there, yeah, they're they're very very corrupt, very authoritarian oligarchies. Mm -hmm. My voice is gone. Oh dear. Um. Okay. Yeah. I mean. Sorry, I ranted a lot. I, I very much enjoy hearing your take on that. I yeah. I mean. Oh God. Do you know? I don't know. Is Actually, last, last thing before, uh, mm -hmm. to cap it off so that you can respond with your... I, I think I think Trump will be, uh, I kind of said before, but I think he'll be a run-of-the-mill Republican president. I don't think he's different enough to warrant the panic that Democrats would like to instill, or liberals. I... Was was there this kind of panic? Um, well, I, so, so what do you make of the panic on the other side? So Hillary Clinton, of course, widely hated by conservatives and, well, a lot of the left. A lot of people. She, you know, she, she, she was not the most likable uh, of people for, for, for a number of reasons. But I know that the the, the Republican-aligned people, you know, they called her things like Hildebeest and, like, they, they called her Demon and all these kind of things. They yeah, yeah. Would you say the, the scare that the Republicans spread about Hillary was comparable to the scare that Democrats... Put a, no, no, no. Well, may, maybe to their people, maybe, maybe it feels the same to their people as this feels to us. Mm. I, I, we're not, you know, the, the Democrats' people, but we're, you know, if if, you, if it's two sided, then we're on mm. that side, right? Yeah. Um, maybe it does feel the same way, but I don't think. So. I mean, I thought you were going to ask about Bush. Like, was was there this kind of uh, fear, -mong fear mongering about uh, Bush Junior? Uh, well, I, I seem to remember, and if I'm mis incorrect, it's that the, the, the fear around Bush Jr. was that he was simple. He was a bit dumb. 
Yeah, no, I do, but but I do think there was, there was this same kind of fear mongering mm. back then for that election. You know, this is he he is you know beyond the pale. He's far more right wing than you know blah. He's going to be the end of blah blah blah. I think that was there. I don't think it was at the same fever pitch that it is now, but I think it was present. I think this is just a thing that the Democrats do to trick people into voting Democrat and getting nothing. If you, you know, if you vote Republicans, things get a little bit worse. If you vote Democrat, things get a little bit worse, a bit slower. Yeah. And they have, to, they have to trick people into voting for that by making the other side seem like the fucking devil. Yeah, I guess that's kind of a, uh, one of the problems with the two-party system, really, isn't it? Is that you've got that narrativized uh, division, whereas yeah. if, surely if you had yeah. a multi-party system... like I During our election, the d- dynamics of reform really made things interesting. And... It, it, it really did, in a way that, again, the media just did not pick up on. Because mm, reform probably uh, are as, as annoyed with the Tories as anybody else. Um, mm-hmm. They have maybe some different difficult opinion, uh, different um, opinions, but then, you know, that's democracy for you, right? Um, and also, a lot of, ref- like, the thing is, like, people talk about reform like they are to the right of the Conservatives, but I, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say that they were to the right of the Conservatives. Well, again, there's nuance. It's a mixed bag. Like but, in yeah. some ways, they so, oh, they definitely are in terms of the culture war stuff, or in terms of well, to the right of the majority of the Tory party, the, the fringes mm. of the Tory party are you know about where reform are. But yeah, on some economic stuff, they're yeah, as we've said, mm. they, you know, the the the, the three child um, thing, they, they they want to lift that, and mm. they sort of appeal to a to a, a, a pop. Well, they're populists. I mean, that's kind of what mm. it comes down to. They're, they're like a populist version of the Tory party. They wanted to bring more stuff into public ownership. That's straight up left wing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But then, there, of course, there were other stuff to counter. But like you say, yeah, yeah, nuance. Um, to be honest, uh, going back to the American bit, like I know what you mean, and I sometimes worry. Like I sometimes, like I don't. I don't know how to interpret that, if I'm completely honest, whether or not it is scaremongering, whether or not Trump is is really as, as dangerous as all that, because Trump definitely did things in his tenure that were more extreme than other Republicans would do. So, for example, the tax cuts on, on the billionaire class, they were more than any any person yeah. vaguely literate in economics would ever would ever do and and but he, also, he, he also did things like the moratorium on student debt which biden came in and cancelled did he how did that work what the it was because of covid right because mm-hmm. um uh, oh, yeah. uh lockdown and 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 what, what's the uh, what's the word for when people aren't at work furlough furlough when people furloughed and they couldn't pay their students so he he just put a moratorium on it which he never ended and that could have just carried on forever you could have just left that moratorium moratorium that was one of the mechanisms you know biden could have used but no biden ended it straight away Mm. i okay well so again so again i think it's all over the place i don't i don't think you can say really uh, even across party lines i don't think like um uh, you know, more people were deported, uh, you know, on the Mexican border. More, more people were deported under Obama than were under Trump. Mm. You know, it's just it's just so all over the place. But when you say with, 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 the, with the the immigration thing, I'm I'm always a bit like, surely how many people get deported and whatever is in at least a substantial part down to like circumstantial things outside of of America's control, right? Surely they're going to be outside factors that determine how many people are approaching the border. So, so certainly, yeah, yeah. In terms of how many people are being approaching the border, but I don't think that's the main factor in terms of. of, of I mean, okay, this is another example of of, of this whole narrative being bullshit. I remember um, uh, when it was Biden Trump, right? Mm-hmm. One of the one of the because they they were saying the same things. It'll be the end of democracy. Trump is a fascist, mm-hmm. and one of the main things they were pointing to as evidence that Trump was a fascist was the kids in cages at the border, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that that was one thing that Democrats were holding up as a you know this is fascism this is why we need to get rid of him mm-hmm. uh, and then Biden gets in and that policy continues <laughs> yeah. the, the children stayed in the cages that did not fucking change so it's it's clearly bullshit and yeah. I, I think the I think the reason the the vote blue no matter who libs I think I think what they get frustrated at is they would say to us. Well, you you will agree that Trump is worse than you know for example mm. Biden right and would say yes no he is he is worse than Biden sure. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and therefore, you've got to vote for Biden. Clearly, if, if one is worse than the other, then you vote for the one that's better. And I don't think they understand that our response is what gets us into this mess in the first place is keep voting for these lesser of two evils, and these mm-hmm. lesser of two evils 
say worse and worse and worse and worse. This is what ferments actual fucking fascism. Yeah. This is the problem. Well, this, You've got to offer it something better. Or up the rhetoric is, you know, I suppose is... is... Yeah, or just, yeah, yeah, fully, fully culture war and politics, actual politics goes out of the fucking window. Yeah. Which is kind of where we are. It's all, it's all culture war now. Even, even the stuff that sounds like actual policy, it's really just culture war because they're not going to fucking do anything. Yeah. Well, cult, culture war is easy. Like also, you know, with a lot of culture war issues, like it, it, it's easy to make big issues out of ones that, that you give a lot of airtime to issues to distract from other issues, right? Because at the end mm. of the day, the one of the biggest roles that government has in in any government is distributing uh working out where where public where tax money is spent or public money is spent <laughs> it's the only thing that actually matters yeah, yeah. it's the only thing that's not fucking talked about it's, it's when we talk about devolution here in, in the uk and we talk about like the welsh assembly and the, all that kind of thing or the the senate as it's now called uh like they don't have tax raising powers so mm. they are they're barely a administration without tax raising powers because if you don't have the ability to tax yeah. then you 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 have very limited ability to spend you can only spend what is fundamentally I mean, even even a county council gets to raise some tax for itself right in terms yeah. of um they know. get to set the rate of council tax within boundaries yeah. and they also get to do things like um bin build solar farms and things like that they get to they get to, you know yeah. involve yeah. themselves in enterprise and my <laughs> local back when my local county council was a conservative county council uh, they they built a solar, f I think it was a solar farm, and it, it and it was bringing in revenue. It was making a profit, and there right. were there were plans to to continue that, which I think are going underway under under the Labour thing. It, as in, like I think Labour are continuing them, as far as I can see. So it does seem to be a yeah. general like cross party local thing, which is good. So, um, but yeah, Welsh Assembly they can they are very limited in in even the kind of power stations they can build and stuff like that, like devolution. Yeah. Yeah, like, and a case. It's a case of like you take the power when it's given to you, but you ask for more. You always ask for more. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the thing is, but no, yeah. I, the, the the problem with the culture war mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. is because I think every, I think I I do think it's a thought that just came to me as I was saying it. But I do think everything is culture war now. And the problem with mm -hmm. culture war mm -hmm. is that it doesn't it it doesn't convince anybody of anything ever. It just it just um, mm -hmm. further deepens people in the positions they're in entrenches is the word i'm looking for it further entrenches people's positions that they're in it just you know it increases this this kind of bullshit polarization i think some of the polarization is legitimate it's a result of young people realizing that if something doesn't fundamentally change then we have no prospects exactly. so and you know based on their own personal experience and education and blah but they either go to the hard right or the hard left and i think mm -hmm. that is, is going to sound potentially bad but i think that is a good thing because i think that's politics returning to politics Mm -hmm. uh, what the culture war does is 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 nullifies that as a political force and, and and just entrenches people in these you know symbolic issues that don't actually matter. Yeah, <laughs> that trailed off poorly, but you you get what I'm saying, right? Exactly, exactly. But any politician that that wants to focus on the economy, like it, like you know, to quote Bill Clinton, it all comes down to the economics. That's a paraphrase, not a quote. <laughs> but like it's it, the you economy. Know, it was the economy, it's the economy, stupid. stupid. Um, but yeah, and and the but thing that is, was correct. <laughs> but not any, as he meant it. But no. yeah, but any, well, any politician uh, that wants to make economic changes, like Corbyn or Sanders, they get they get nixed. They get you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. If you want to fundamentally, because that is mm. that is challenging the 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 hegemony of of capital over mm. western politics and, and that you know they, they will they will react and they did react with 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 burning into a greater extent corbyn mm. cool all right i've only got about but 10... i think I... sorry okay uh... well uh, very quickly I, mm -hmm. how long do you think we can keep limping on with these dismal fucking centrists every time and the lesser of two evil stuff if to me it feels like that is coming that mm. has to come to an end it like feels... something's gotta give well it feels like a type of rot right like it feels like yeah. like like you're driving a car into the ground type of thing like it's just getting worse and worse and worse but what 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 then is is i suppose the real question yeah Poss yeah see this is the thing the, the the actual breaking of the levy might be project 25 i don't want to like necessarily buy into all the scare scaremongering but like i don't know i feel like there's something that, that there's more than something there maybe that scaremongering is just the working on me but or maybe the people behind going Trump, back not... to what we said before mm -hmm. like the, the way you get fascism is more and more you know dismal mm -hmm. centrist 
Um, and the, I think the only way out is for the, you know, the, the supposedly left wing parties to en- embrace, you know, at least social democracy, because yeah. otherwise there's nowhere for that, you know, that energy I was talking yeah. about that wants things to change. The only place it's got to go is the far right, who's actually, you know, a, 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 an actual active political force. Yeah, I, I, the thing is, though, like you look at the American system itself, like, here's the thing, right? I'm a lot more optimistic about British politics at the moment because we actually can you turn a government in an election i don't yeah, think americans yeah. can really do that if kamala wins maybe she might not get the houses beneath her there's a very good chance that she might not get the houses beneath her in which case oh, yeah, no, you know like yeah. it, it feels like the system at this point in time whether or not by accident or by design is is stifling any kind of real change because it's mm. just a game of whoever's the president is working against their own government whether or not it's blue against yeah, red or red yeah. against and blue. Again, and again, that's the, the reason it's more viable here is because the third parties, right? It's 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 reform, mm-hmm. the Greens and the Lib Dems that made that that, that you know that made that happen. And also um, how our chambers of government before. work. Like we've got basically we've yeah. got like a main chamber of government in the House of Commons. We've got a refining sort of chamber in in the House of Lords, and then in theory we've got the King to sign it off. That's a much yeah. What, 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 sometime yeah. this is another thing that we're going to need to do a deep dive on. We need to have a deep dive on the U.S. Constitution because mm. the Constitution there, there, there's a there is a theory of the Constitution that invests a lot of power in the president. But like mm. the, the the mainstream view of the Constitution is, is is it gave it intended to give all power pretty much to Congress. Yeah. Um. The president was essentially supposed to be a sort of figurehead. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, you know, and 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 fulfill the role that you know our our constitutional monarchy fills of just you know rubber stamping the policy. Um, uh, the Supreme Court had very little power. It was supposed mm. to all be invested in Congress, and that would make a lot more sense. That would run mm. a lot better. That it, it's such a huge problem when you get a president from one party in Congress, or you know the, the mm. Senate and House represent the other party. It's just deadlock, right? Mm. But the thing is, as well, is is that like if you want to make any kind of meaningful structural change, you need a super like either a super majority or you need yeah. Republicans and yeah. Democrats to actually come together and actually decide. Actually, all right, let's mm. have which they're not going to do. They're just there's no, not no. There's no straight up. It's it's fantasy just to even say it really. And it, you know, is is this where in a, in an alternative timeline where Democrats had balls, they would have actually taken the two seats. They would have got Beta Ginsburg's seat. They would have got the the the, the missing seat that Obama handed over. They would have got the Supreme Court over and then done the same overreaching that Republicans have done to actually. I don't know. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. But, but yeah, the problem is that the, the Democrats play by you know in inverted commas the rules. You know, mm-hmm. the, the 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 gentlemanly. You know, we're supposed to behave this way, kind of stuff, and the, and the Republicans don't. But mm-hmm. I mean, what the Democrats now, what the sort of liberals are calling for is is expanding the Supreme Court. You know, so mm-hmm. that you, you so a, a, you know a, a, a Democrat president can stick a bunch of. Democrat leaning judges in there, but what do they think is going to happen the next time a Republican's in charge? They're just going to expand it further and expand that. Just that does not solve the problem. You've got to disempower the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court was never intended to to fucking legislate. That's the job. That's the job of Congress. Yeah, the, the, the Supreme Court wasn't supposed to legislate. The president wasn't supposed to legislate. Congress is. Supreme Court is just supposed to be a highest form of court, like the yeah. House of Lords used to be here, and then we replace it with Supreme Court, where they just ultimately have decide on you know decide on legal cases. That wasn't supposed to be a source of yeah, yeah. But uh, they need to, they, they, expanding it isn't good enough. You need mm. to either abolish ideally or just disempower the Supreme Court. Yeah, but then again, any of those changes requires more yeah yeah and well, that's... well no because 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 the, the stuff they're doing now isn't laid out in the constitution so it wouldn't take an amendment it would just take it would just take it would, it would just take a majority in congress i think to uh change i think I'm, I'm, i might be wrong about that but i but that's sort of where where i think it sort of it, it is leading is that i don't think the american i think the american system is kind of in a in a boot loop is that what they call it when when the system just keeps rebuilding in what, sorry? Uh, like a boot loop. What's it a when a boot loop? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's apt. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, it's like old grubs crapped out, and now it's just going around and around <laughs> and around. Yeah, something like yep. that. Yeah, it's um, and that's kind of how it feels. Like you know, it. I think in the in the UK, we we, you know, I I, I yeah, like I I think I think we'll probably sort of regain some kind of normalcy, and I think the Conservatives will start regrouping, and I think you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I think with with the states, I just that rot has set in, and I, I think, think but the, yeah, it's that rot. There is a change coming down the line, you know. Mm. As the the old people die off and the young people come through, they do want, you know. It, it, mm. I think we talked about it last time that poll that poll in France of you know young people 
and their voting intention and the same over here mm. and it's they are they are they're hard left and hard right there's some in the mm. middle of course but they're far more far more of them are hard left and hard mm. right than they are of you know even our generation yeah so and, there's a change coming down the line and mm. parties aren't ready for it something you know things are yeah. gonna things are gonna go to shit but also i think one thing as well and this is a little bit more fantasy politics is is that i think there is actually some legitimacy in the idea of breaking down the united states into a number of countries I, I we need an entire episode for that <laughs> yeah. one, or at least a, a more time than you've got right now yeah, yeah. Because, i mean the, 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 very quickly the problem with that is certain mm. states have all the money so you'd have you'd have an incredibly wealthy california and an incredibly incredibly impoverished you know whatever region you yeah know, the midwest would be okay because farms but texas where they don't do taxes <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But, the, but then like is like then you've basically got california funding texas in the same way that london funds the rest of the uk like that the the centralization in some ways is is the problem again that's yeah that's complicated though because yeah, yeah the, the you know london funds the uk by sucking up all of the talent and money and resources from the rest of you know it's all it's almost like a, a mini imperialism a mini colonialism you could, you could right? say that about and, california i don't think that's quite this quite as true of uh, of america because because what because it's not quite so centralized you have you have mm. multiple poles of uh economic cultural so on and political power or not political so much but you mm. have different poles of power like new york is is economically huge california is economically huge texas i think is doing very well economically um yeah. what about vegas <laughs> i mean las vegas i'm sure it's better money obviously yeah. yeah yeah but it's uh yeah, it's not as straightforward as one pole soaking up all of the resources over there. They it's, they are sort of yeah. you know it, it, you, you can you, you know you could you could separate California from the Midwest, but then you know where you go buy your food from. You know the Midwest yeah. just hikes up grain prices. It's just that would be a that would not work for any of them really. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But um, cool. All right, are we good to wrap it up there? I... Yeah. Yeah. Um... Cool. Uh, anyway, to summarise, I think Kamala stands a better chance, but at the moment I would still put it in Trump's favour, but I, I think things could change. I, I think they're in a better position now than, than they were. Uh, a very a very brief uh, congratulations to what were they called? Crowd? Crowd? Oh. Like crowd? Uh, uh, um, crowd fuck. Crowd strike. Successfully hacking uh, 9 million Windows computers. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> yeah. The, the biggest hacking group in the world yeah well done <laughs> all right uh cool all right should we wrap it up there um yep all right toodaloo everyone